And we're talking about three inches of added buoyancy just by changing how we go into the movement. People ask me, how do I float? Seems like no matter what I do, I just sink. So that brings us here today for a little challenge. I'm gonna try three different front floats where all I do is change the breath that I take before I go into the front float. Because we need to answer the question, how does my last breath before floating impact my ability to front float? We're gonna measure our progress in three categories. Number one, how long can I sustain each respective float? Number two, we're gonna measure the buoyancy of each respective float, meaning how high in the water am I actually laying while I'm in my front float? And number three, on a one to 100 scale, what is the likelihood of success for a brand new swimmer being able to do this respective float? Is it true that the breath I take before floating has a major impact on my actual float? We're gonna answer that question today. Let's go. The three style breaths that I'm going to be measuring are number one, taking no inhale at all. Number two, what is a standard chest breath? And number three, a diaphragmatic breath. So breath number one, I'm not actively exhaling before I go into the movement, but I'm also not actively inhaling. So all I'm going to do is just go into the movement without any breathe up prior to actually beginning the front float. Let's see how we do. All right, variable number one, I'm gonna go into my front float without doing any breathe up at all. And we're gonna measure how long I can actually hold my breath for in this position. Test two is going to be how high my body actually lays in the water. So we are gonna be measuring this from where the base of my head sits against the wall. And for this first breathe up, it's gonna be shown with a red sidewalk chalk on the wall. Let's check it out. Number two, we're doing a standard chest breath. Let's see how long I can hold my breath for on this one. Now let's see how high I ride in the water with a standard chest breath or how buoyant I actually am compared to number one. And I'll be measuring this with our blue chalk. Breath style number three is our diaphragmatic breath. And now I'm really curious because we added about what, 15 seconds just from going from no breath to chest breath. Let's see the difference when I go through a full diaphragmatic breath. One of the things that's really important to know is I'm not pushing my max breath hold, but I'm trying to give a realistic representation of what the experience is gonna be like for you. So the minute that I start to feel pressure in my chest, that's my signal to stand up. And what I noticed inside of that is that I doubled my breath hold from no breathe up to diaphragmatic breath. And I increased, what, 20 seconds almost from a chest breath to a diaphragmatic breath. So this is of massive impact. I'm really curious to see how our buoyancy is gonna change by a diaphragmatic breath. Let's check it out. Variable number two was the difference in our buoyancy level in the water between a no breathe up and a diaphragmatic breath. 
And what did we notice? The difference in buoyancy was over the length of the size of a standard piece of chalk. Guys, that's over three inches difference. So if we're talking about a brand new swimmer trying to learn how to find their buoyancy in the water, this is a massive deal. And we're talking about three inches of added buoyancy just by changing how we go into the movement. This is crazy. And variable number three is very, very subjective. Luckily, the other two were very objective, but my subjective opinion on a one to 100 scale of how impactful, how beneficial, how easy it is for a new swimmer to be able to adopt this and implement this change or implement the process, let's say that. So the first one, a no breath. I think this was insanely challenging. I immediately felt like I was out of breath I felt lower in the water and it didn't feel easy for me to be able to actually find a front float position, which keep in mind, guys, I'm what you would consider a professional swimmer. Me finding a front float is like, I don't even know. It's so easy. It's, it's just like, what? It's like drinking water. It's like finding the toilet in the morning when you got to take your morning pee. Like you just know how to do it. That's kind of where I am here with front floating. And it was much, very much a challenge. So I would rate on a zero to hundred scale, the no breathe up somewhere around a 20 as far as how beneficial that's going to be for you. Uh, I don't recommend doing it. So number two, the chest breath. I feel like a, a fair judgment on this is somewhere between 70 and 80. I think it's natural. And if we're not actively thinking about taking a breath prior to going into the movement, I think we're going to get somewhere around 70% of the result. So I think that's a fair analysis for a chest breath. And then finally, our diaphragmatic breath, which after all of these categories, I highly recommend you practice a diaphragmatic breath at home because far and away, this just absolutely crushed the other two options. As far as the length of time I could hold my breath, I could have easily kept going and I was at, what, a minute and three seconds compared to in the 40s, I think it was 46 seconds with a chest breath and in the 30s with no breath. And I, like I said, I had room in the tank. I could have kept going. As far as our buoyancy, I mean, we're talking about at least an inch of added buoyancy from even our chest breath. That is massively impactful to you. And as far as a comfort and how replicatable this is for a new swimmer to do, guys, it's so easy. Just expand your stomach, pull it up to your chest, take the added time in the beginning to learn how to do this. The results are insanely impactful. Guys, I wanna hear from you. What'd you think of the style of this video? It's a little different from the normal videos that um, I produce here on the channel. How likely is it that you're gonna be able to implement this change to improve your front float? And then, and most importantly, I wanna hear from you once you actually do this challenge, how did you find the results to be? Were they beneficial? Were they not? Were you able to replicate my findings? Were yours different? I wanna hear from you. Thank you guys so much. And if you are looking to add tips and tricks to your learn to swim experience, make sure to click on the link in the description below. I have a free and paid content library with one link that will open you up to our entire suite of learn to swim materials. Make sure you click on that to see if anything's beneficial for you. Guys, I can't wait to see you in the next one. Thank you so much.